once said that he taught only two things, suffering and the end of suffering. And so as we approach the practice, we have to realize that these are the big issues. And particularly the suffering we cause ourselves. That's the big issue. And when the Buddha talks in the terms of the Four Noble Truths, that's the suffering he's focusing on, where there's clinging to the five aggregates, clinging to your body, your forms, or forms of any kind, clinging to feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness. And there's clinging only when there's craving. So these are the issues we have to watch out for. He says, suffering is something you have to learn how to comprehend, understand why it's happening, how it's happening. And to do that, you have to get the mind really still to watch it, because you're watching yourself. And watching yourself is very hard, because it's the movements of the mind that are creating this problem. And we're in those movements, so it's hard for us to see them, to get a sense that there is something moving. It's like being on planet Earth. It moves around the sun. But we have the sense that it's standing still because its movement seems constant. But still, we're moving, moving, moving all the time. So when we're practicing, we want to get, get out of the movement. This is why the practice of concentration is so important. We're used to staying in the movements of our minds all the time, so we can hardly see them. We hardly sense what's going on. We're chattering to ourselves all the time. And so we can't hear what's going on. The mind is just filled with this chatter, so we've got to get that chatter as still as possible. And learn how to regard it with a, a good dose of suspicion. Because we tend to believe all these ideas that come popping to the head. You should do this, you should do that, this is right, that's wrong. We have to learn how to step out of those opinions before we're going to see them at all, before we see how much suffering they cause for ourselves. So this is why the Buddha talks about having respect for concentration, even though it may seem numb just sitting here making the mind still, 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 still. Still, it's a necessary prerequisite for seeing anything. And we're really seeing instead of having views. So this is what we have to work on as much as possible. When you settle down in the body, find a place where it's, it's, you can stay comfortable. Even though there may be pain in some parts of the body, it's not everywhere in the body. If every cell of your body were in pain, you'd die. So as long as you're alive, there must be some place where the mind can settle down. And just learn how to keep it there. However months, many months or years it may take, it's all time well spent. And John Mahabhava talks about how he spent eight years with a John Munn, and a good part of that time was on concentration practice. And it wasn't until towards the end that John Mahan sort of gave him a kick and said, "Okay, now it's time to work on developing discernment." I mean, you do develop con you do develop discernment to some extent as you're practicing concentration. You can't develop concentration without it. There's a certain level that's needed to get the mind to settle down. Understanding how to sidestep the tricks of the mind, how to see through them, how to not get taken in by the the voices that say, well, this is dumb, or you should do this, or you should do that. But then there's another level that has to go beyond that. And I think it's instructive. You know, John Mahabha was, he was a sharp person, very intelligent, well-educated. And John Mahabha had him stay there for years and years and years, simply because he knew that he would need that much stillness in order to overcome the thoughts and opinions in his mind. So you have to have respect for concentration. 
keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And as for your other opinions, learn to view them with a jaundiced eye. Because without that attitude, you'll never see through things. Once you can get still and sort of get outside of your thoughts, then you can watch them. This is how you see how the mind creates suffering for itself. You can focus, say, for instance, on a physical pain. Then ask yourself, okay, which part here is the physical pain, which part is the mental pain? And if you can't see, see it right away, well, use the breath to deal with it. If the way you breathe changes the pain, okay, it's, that's the physical element of the pain. But you also, as you work with it, you begin to notice your mental attitudes as well. When there's pain in the body, how does it affect the, affect the way you breathe? What kind of assumptions are behind that? Sometimes we try to isolate the pain, cut it off from the breathing process, and that just makes things worse. So you consciously breathe through the pain. Or you can focus on the, on the pain itself and ask yourself, okay, what shape does the pain have in your mind? Okay, it's all in the mind. Pains don't have shapes. But you realize it's buried someplace in your mind. There's this preconception about the shape of the pain. Or watch the movements of the pain, its comings and goings. Okay, why does it come? Why does it go? Are the causes all physical or some of them mental? If you can catch a mental, mental cause, okay, then you're really getting somewhere. You watch as soon as the pain flares up, there's also this particular act of labeling or this particular thought construct that comes into the mind. What happens if you drop it? There are lots of different approaches for, for dealing with pain. But the basic element there is to see, okay, can you catch the movements of the mind? Sometimes it's almost like it's in the cor out of the corner of your eye. This part of the mind is involved in the movement. That's the part that can't see its own movement. You want to develop that kind of awareness that's separate from the, from the thoughts. It doesn't get pulled in with them. In other words, the thought can move, but you don't move with it. Because all too often we're like a person standing by the side of the road. These cars come pulling up, and they say, come on in, come on in. And they just jump in without really asking, where are you going? Who are you? You just jump in. And you want to pull away from that habit. If a car comes up, Invites you to jump in and say, okay, well, where are you going? Who are you? What's, what's the trip planned here? And if it's something that's really worth thinking about, okay, you go ahead and think about it. But you'll find that most of the thoughts that come running into your mind are just these vagrant people from who knows where coming to offer you a joyride. So you have to learn how to step out of your thoughts. Step out of those movements in the mind so you can see them for what they are. Then you notice the ones that cause stress and pain, suffering. And you can learn how to drop them. The same principle applies with mental pain, the attitudes that cause you to suffer as you carry things around. This has to be that way, that has to be this way. All the stuff we carry around with us so in the mind, you have to realize it's not necessary to carry it around. You don't lose anything by dropping it. Many times we carry old grudges around and we feel that this, there's some value in carrying them around. If we put them aside and we were losing out somehow, we're not going to get our revenge. Well, that doesn't accomplish anything at all. You have to trust in the principle of karma. You don't have to go out settling scores. Your main, your main duty is to watch out for the way the mind creates suffering for itself. Because otherwise you just burn yourself up. And again, it's 
these movements of the mind, this act of carrying this around, carrying that around. You're so used to doing it that it becomes sort of the background. And when something gets back in the background like that, it's really hard to see. You've got to pull it out. Okay, what are the attitudes that cause you to carry these things around? What do you get out of it? And at the same time, what suffering do you cause yourself? The mind is really still and really sensitive. It'll see these things. And once you see that it's unnecessary, okay, then you can drop it. That's the important element in all, all discernment. We, many times we realize we're suffering, we're suffering, but we don't realize how unnecessary it is. Something in us thinks, well, this is the way the mind has to run itself. This is the way we have to think. Can't think in any other way. And so you keep on carrying that suffering around. But when you realize that those attitudes, those burdens you carry, the things you cling to, the things you crave, are really not necessary, then who would carry them around? But to see that, you've got to put the mind in a position of strength. It has to be in a position of solidity. And again, this is what the concentration is for. It gives you the strength. It gives you the sense of nourishment, so you're not always going out trying to feed on things that are going to backfire on you. This is why we feel these sufferings are so necessary, because we feed on them and think, this is where we get our nourishment, this is where we get our sustenance. But it's pretty miserable nourishment, pretty miserable sustenance. Isn't there anything better than that? This is what the meditation offers. A better place to feed. A better place to gain your sustenance. Once the mind feels strong and well-fed like this, then you look at your old feeding places, the old garbage cans and other places where you used to pick around and find this and find that, and you realize, I don't have to do that anymore. That's when the mind is freed. So work at keeping the mind well-focused, well-established within, so it can see these movements for what they are. If you don't see them yet, okay, it means your concentration isn't strong enough, isn't solid enough. Just get really, really still so that these movements can come out of the background and become apparent. And then watch for which ones cause stress and suffering, and learn how to see that they're not necessary. Then you can drop them. And then when you drop them, okay, then the Buddha's finished with you. Nothing more to teach you. Once everything is dropped. But until that point is reached, we all have a lot of work to do. So don't waste your time on other issues. This is the one that really matters. <laughs>